what is going on guys, we're racing here back a brand new video and today we'll be talking about who will be filling the seats in Sauber for the F1 2015 season. So let's start off then talking about all the candidates for those two seats for the Sauber F1 racing team in 2015. And we'll start out then with the two current drivers and that's Adrian Sutil and Esteban Gutierrez. First of all, let's talk about Sutil then. He's a very experienced driver. He's had many years in Formula 1, I believe he started in 2007. I've always been a big fan of him. Uh, mainly because we do have the same surname and that's pretty much it i mean he's had loads of really good races in the past you know 2011 was a fantastic season you know managing to finish ninth he was tipped to go to either mclaren or ferrari and then he punched someone in a i think a chinese bar and that basically ruined his whole career he then made a comeback in 2013 of course with force india but he was you know through and through outperformed by paul de resta and uh a new start at Sauber, I think, for 2014 should have been the way to go for Sutil, but it's turned out to be an, a terrific year with, um, you know, the Sauber card has been really bad and very unreliable. Sutil, I believe, has had six retirements, which might be the most on the grid, I think. But uh, I think that's pretty much right. Probably um, around Vern as well. I think he's had quite a few. But Sutil's, I think, has had the most retirements this season. But amazingly, none of them have been his fault, um, apart from one, which was the uh, Monaco incident, which was just a mistake from him that sent him into the barriers, thanks to that car handling so horribly. People might say that the Germany one, but that was actually a brake failure, although the um, Sky Sports commentary team didn't seem to notice that, as they um, blamed him and said there should have been a safety car, of course, and of course that would have favoured Hamilton, and they didn't really know the full details, so there's been a lot of you know bad criticism for Sutil and some of it is unfair but some of it is fair for example of course at the Singapore Grand Prix when he just sort of turned in on Perez I think because you know Sutil was losing power at that time he had really bad times he was going really slow and just wouldn't have realized Perez would have managed to get up there so quickly so it's probably worse than it did you know than it looked and actually in the end it really did help Sergio Perez to get that seventh position because without that he'd have gone on the same strategy as Maldonado Grosjean Hulkenberg and had just fallen back and probably stayed in around 14th place which he was anyway Sutil could have scored points without that failure and uh, has definitely been the closer of the two I think Gutierrez has had a chance at points in Monaco and uh, he really fluffed it um, there you know just crashing when he was I think he was at about in a really solid eighth position meanwhile Sutil was I think at about 15th not looking very likely to score points although in the end he could have done I think Gutierrez, you know, was at a really good chance and really should have taken points on that race. But unfortunately for him, he did crash. And I think, you know, he has um, had a few too many incidents, I think, this year. And he hasn't really shown that much pace. Um, him and Sutil are pretty equal. I think Sutil probably just has the edge. Sutil definitely doesn't have as much pace as he used to have. And Gutierrez was outperformed by Hulkenberg in 2013. Totally. I remember if Gutierrez, you know, he only scored one uh, he only scored points in one race. Meanwhile, his teammate was coming fourth and fifth. You'd think even Gutierrez could just get into, you know, the places in ninth and tenth, but no, he only had one good race in America where he scored points. And of course, in that same race, Sutil ended up in the barriers. Gutierrez does have loads of money though, and as with the Mexican Grand Prix, of course, coming into the calendar for 2015, I think Gutierrez has a really good chance of retaining a seat. Memo Sutil seems to be on the way out of Sauber, and indeed, on the way out of Formula One altogether. Moving on to Guido van der Gaard, the reserve driver. He's probably the favourite alongside Gutierrez. Those two are looking pretty likely to take the two seats. Although, of course, nothing is actually confirmed. And, of course, you know, the uh, um, Sauber people and the two current drivers are quite reluctant to say if they'll be staying on. Although Gutierrez is confident, Sutil probably not so. And it's more saying he will be staying until the end of the year rather than next year. Van der Gaard brings in a lot of money, a really good close sponsorship deal, I think is in the region of 15 million, and I think Sutil only brings 5, and I think Gutierrez also brings around 10 to 15 million. He's had one year with Caterham, and he was pretty average, but he did show a lot of potential, and you know, arguably did outperform peak towards the end of the year. He was also a really good qualifier, I found, um, you know, getting that Caterham, dragging it up into Q2, I think, on two occasions, I think, in Spa and Monaco, so he's a pretty good qualifier. And um, although he is quite old, which uh, can be a good thing with experience, but also if Sauber are looking for a, you know, a person for the future, then I'm not sure they will be getting him. Anyway, let's move on to Jonic Verne. Of course, recently just dropped by Toro Rosso. He matched Ricardo 
had his time at Toro Rosso, had three years in F1. He was um, already at a pretty backmarker team, you know, Toro Rosso kind of on the verge of the midfield. Um, you know, of course, sixth position is his best ever result. I think he achieved that, of course, in uh, Singapore this year as well. But also, I think he got a sixth position at Canada last year, if I'm right. So, Vern's had some really strong performances. And I do wonder, you know if he really should be an even even top drive but I think a Sauber drive would really suit him and hopefully if that Sauber car is better it could be a chance for Vern to really you know make a name for himself and maybe get picked up by another big team or even prove to Red Bull that they were wrong and uh, although I doubt Red Bull would sign him maybe even someone like Force India Ferrari maybe in the future could sign him if Vern does impress at Sauber which at the moment he's doing a great job at Toros and if he can continue the swamp season in the season there's, you know, he's definitely got the attention of Sauber, and he's probably the best driver out of all these I'll be mentioning today. But of course, he don't has he doesn't have that money despite some Red Bull backing. But hopefully, Red Bull can put a good, put in a good word for him, and Vern can get that seat. Now let's just give you a few sort of honourable mentions. But I won't talk too much about Sergei Sorokin. He's got an FP1 debut, I think in um, Russia, Sochi, but I think that's more of a marketing thing. I can't see him really being on the grid next year, although that would be a massive surprise if he did. Now, of course, not for his age, but really just, you know, his lack of experience in an F1 car and in single-seater racing, and not quite having the success of that of uh, Max Verstappen, of course, who is 17 and coming into Formula 1. So, Gus Roptikin, I believe, is about 19 or 20, but I could be wrong, I have to look it up. After I've done this, and then Silmino, sorry, Semeno del Silvestri, I think it is, the female racer. Again, she hasn't had much experience in an F1 car. F1 Racing are saying she's got a seat for 2015, but I can't really see it happening. It's gone too quiet. So I think both of them sadly will be missing out on a race seat. Maybe 2016 for them could be their best opportunity. And one final thought maybe Jules Bianchi could also go there. But really, I haven't heard much of that, and probably not that realistic. Um, there seems to be this uh, an anomalous link between um, Ferrari and Salba, but apart from Felipe Massa going, I haven't really seen that. So I don't think that's really that true. Yes, they supply engines, but really, I'm not sure if they're really going to be supplying drivers. I think Forza Rossa is coming in for that for uh, Ferrari. But anyway, let's round out the video then with your predictions and my final prediction. First of all, we've got Conan Welsh, Welsh who says Van der Gaard and Esteban. Um, bring lots of money probably not the best results though so he's obviously making the point for a lot of these you know two drivers um, bring in money but sadly they won't be able to get the results but maybe someone like Vern or Sutil could bring in oh, of course you know Sutil hasn't really shown that this year uh, moving on anyway and at Coulson in 99 says Gutierrez should be safe in my opinion because money and the Mexican Grand Prix it's because I've already mentioned and uh, yeah I do agree that Mexican Grand Prix is pretty much sealed Gutierrez's place on the grid but of course that could still change the don't think Guido van der Gaard Sutil isn't quick isn't that quick anymore and I do agree Sutil has a lot of pace and you know coming from a Sutil fan he doesn't deserve to be an F1 and uh, next year and that was pretty hard from a Sutil fan and then the final comment then we've just got three comments today is um, from at stopmat 1998 YT and he says Vern and Van der Gaard quite simply so uh, the general consensus does seem to put Van der Gaard in there so I'm definitely going to go with Van der Gaard and Gutierrez will I think be the lineup but the strongest lineup for me would be John McVern and Guido van der Gaard of the people possible and uh, maybe I think Vern and Bianchi would be ultimate but a more realistic one and I think a great lineup for Salva should definitely go with is van der Gaard and Vern especially with van der Gaard's money and you know a, a lot of potential there and also John McVern we know is a major talent so I'm really hoping Salva will make the right decision but of course, you know, money does talk in F1. Anyway, let me know your prediction then, which two drivers will be signing for Salva for the F1 2015 season. I'm Spirating, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Goodbye.